So the Criterium du Dauphiné started a few days ago, three or four days, depending on when you're watching this. And that's a eight stage race, which is often seen and indeed used as a uh, final warm up to the Tour de France, as it uses many of the same roads, same climate, same terrain, and indeed often the same amount of support as well. So, in this video, I'm going to be previewing stage six, which is in a couple of days' time, because that's in my neck of the woods. So, stage six will be starting in Nantua in the Jura and initially heading south towards Annecy before crossing over a couple of coals, switching back towards Geneva. I then cross the big flat plain of the Arve Valley, which I'm in now, towards Bonville, which I'm just on the edge of, before turning up towards the Alps proper. And I believe probably coming along the road that I'm on now. Following this road to Saint Pierre and then up towards the Col de Zerabi. So I'll be departing Nantua around about midday with a initially a fairly leisurely start. And then obviously depending on how fast they're going, expect them to be arriving around Bonville around 2.33, maybe just after three. From there, the end of it's quite fast pace. Should get to the top of the Col de Zerabi around about four. If it's a slow pace, then maybe 4.30. And if they get to the Col de Zerabi around four, you expect them to get down to Flume, around about 4.15, 4.20, before they start climbing again up to Crest of Land, which is where the stage finishes, around 4.30, 4.35, 4.45. So, yeah, if you want to watch any of the stage in those areas, then I'm only aiming to get to those spots maybe half an hour to an hour before the race comes through. It's not like Tour de France, you don't need to be there four hours beforehand. I don't think there's a caravan, but yeah, definitely worth getting there. A good 30, 40 minutes ahead at least, otherwise you won't be able to get there. So the first three stages of the race have been dominated by the kind of punchy climbers who can also sprint. So Christophe Laporte and Julien Alaphilippe have been vying out the top spots the first three stages. The GC contenders have been largely keeping their powder dry so far. I expect them to come into the fore today and today's individual time trial. So just start to see a bit more of a pecking order develop after today's stage four. Stage five is also another hilly day, potentially for the sprinters, but probably not for six, seven, eight, all being mountain stages. So yeah, very much hots up towards the end of the race this year. So this is Saint Pierre in Fulcini, the gateway to the high Alps for this year's Dauphiné. So the climbing proper starts here, albeit initially at a very low gradient. So I don't know exactly which road the route will take getting through the town, but then once you get to this point, there's only one road, this is the way it goes. Right on cue, you know there's a bike race coming through here recent, soon, rather, because the road's just been resurfaced. So it's immaculate right now. Won't last, of course, but it's part of the reason why all these towns have just hosted the Tour de France, they get to have new roads. Or even the Criterium, should I say. So already you know you're in the Alps. The road hasn't ramped up much, but you just round one bend and the scenery changes instantly. Passing off of the flat valley floor up into this mountain valley. Initially, go through a very steep, narrow gorge for a few hundred meters. That comes out a little bit into what I'm in now. And basically, continues like this for kilometer after kilometer, really. So, pretty pleasant. So, as mentioned, the Dauphiné is often used as the final preparations for the Tour de France. So, many of the big guns competing this week as well. Indeed, in the past, Likes of Garen Thomas, Chris Froome, and Brad Wiggins have all done the Dauphiné Tour double, as many others in the past as well. So, often those that you find on the podium in the Dauphiné, you also find on the podium in the Tour de France. It's definitely worth a watch. Of course, not all the big guns are here this year. Tajay Podakar is still recovering from his broken wrist. And, of course, Garen Thomas and Primoz Roblik are recovering after the Giro d'Italia. So, they're not going to be in the Tour de France either. Jonas Vingegaard, Richard Carapaz, and Julian Philippe, etc. They're all here. I expect them to be lighting up the race. Our section through the Petit Bonand is quite a long section of almost flat, so I expect the racing to be pretty fast through here. 
Riding up a big broad valley like this in the heat of the afternoon means the riders are going to have a pretty strong tailwind because you get the valley winds flowing up the valley in the heat of the day. So I expect any breakaway to find it pretty easy to stay away on this section of the climb because wide fast roads. The wind on your heels, not actually an advantage being in the bunch. You're getting more, gain, more benefit from the wind out on your own. So yeah, expect the breakaway to do well. Stage on the sixth, the location of stages intermediate sprint. Don't know exactly where it's going to be, but given that it's part of a climb, don't expect the sprinters to be chasing after it. Likes Valor Philippe probably going for it, but yeah, the breakaway may well have swamped up all the points anyway, so it's probably not on void. This is the ski resort, La Clusa. Bit of a ghost town at the moment, but then it is a work day and it's not the school holidays yet. I expect to be much busier on the day when all the locals come out to watch the race. Lots of places to spectate, such as here. First of the hairpins on the final drag up to the col. Up until this point, this place has been a straight slog up from La Clusa. But yeah, there's like Maybe eight hairpins now before the summit. So, time to climb a bit more rapidly. I expect to see all these hairpins in this section of the road. All the laybys, etc. Packed with fans on Friday. All the diehard fans, plus all the locals should be out in force. This is the first big climb of the Dauphiné, so yeah. A lot can change right here. This is the Col Zaravi, the first big mountain climb of this year's Dauphiné and the high point of the day stage. The stage isn't over yet. After this there's a reasonably technical descent down into Laguita and Flume before climbing back up again to Festival Land, the Festival Land for the finish line. So yeah, still plenty to play for at this point. Normally you get great views of Mont Blanc from up here, but it's currently shrouded in the storm clouds, so not today. Still, pretty impressive view nonetheless. This is Laguita. We're clearly ready for the race here, even if they weren't in the cluiser. So, as I said, it's pretty technical descent down to here. The road's pretty tight and winding. Also pretty poor road surface as well, lots of cracks and small potholes. So don't be surprised if you see a few frills and spills. Also, kind of four in the afternoon, the weather could come into play too. You could expect thunderstorms in the afternoon at that time of day. So yeah, could be dicey. From here, it's a bit flatter, a bit straighter, down to Flume. This is Flume, an historic crossroads. For thousands of years, people had passed through here to cross the Alps, either north, south, or east, west. And virtually every year, either the Tour de France and or the Dauphiné will come through here. Because basically, if you want to cross the Alps anywhere, this is where you need to go through. So riders will be coming down there from the Col Zarafi, under that bridge. Sorry. Yeah, under that bridge, past the church. And then, and then cross this ancient stone bridge and straight away back into climbing again. So, not much respite from the descent to the ascent again. Like, barely 100 metres of flat before you get transitioning from one to the other, but there we are. So I'll probably be coming to watch the race somewhere around here. I came to watch Tour de France here a couple of years ago. It's a pretty good location, especially if you're coming from Chamonix, it's easy to get to. Well, the granted being on the flat bottom, the riders are herring past at a rate of knots, so you won't actually get to see them for very long. It's not as good as if you're actually up on the col, but quite a lot of effort to get up to the col. So, yeah, probably watching it around here. It's usually a good, good atmosphere, all the school children come out and line the road just up there. So yeah, 
Definitely worth it. So bad weather's kind of stopped play here, so I'm going to call it a day. Especially seeing as I'm still quite a long way from home and it's getting late and it'll be dark at some point, so yeah. The race will continue up from here towards Notre Dame de la Balcon and then short descent before the final climb up to Festival Land. So we're around about 900 metres here and I think the finish line's around about 1300, so still at least 400 metres of climbing to go, a bit more when you consider the up and down. So yeah, the race is far from over at this point, but you'd imagine that most things would have been sorted out by top of the Col de Zarabi. So I wouldn't be surprised if someone from the breakaway wins this stage. That is, of course, unless someone who's a threat to the GC happens to get into the breakaway early on, in which case the likes of Jumbo Visma will be charging to cut them down before the top of the Col de Zarabi. I certainly expect there to be some movement in the GC, or at least some attempts to have some, to make something happen, but given that it's a pretty long, pretty fast climb, and then particularly steep, it'd be hard to get any decent gaps on the way up. Something can happen on the way down, of course, but yeah. My prediction is for someone from the breakaway to win, so we shall have to wait and see.